Imagine this, you are looking to buy a new VR headset right now. You mainly want to do VR stuff on a PC, but you want better than what a Quest 2 offers, but don't want to spend a thousand plus dollars on something like an Index. Well, I might just have the thing for you. Put the place up. The VR market has honestly been crazy this year, experiencing record-breaking growth, which is interesting because nothing really happened VR hardware-wise. Besides HTC releasing a few new headsets and Vario releasing the beautiful but prohibitively expensive Aero, with one exception, the HP Reverb G2 version 2. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. If the Vario Aero is a spectacularly clear, amazing headset that costs more than $2,000, HP's G2 V2 is kind of a hyper budget feature cut super consumer version of the arrow costing just a quarter of the price and lacking a lot of the features but making it up where it counts where your eyes are and i also realized that i've owned an original g2 for more than a year now and i never put out a full review so here's the perfect opportunity with version 2 of this headset and i gotta say right away this is pretty much the best looking vr headset for the price even if there are some drawbacks and there are some drawbacks. So let's take a look into some high resolution virtual reality on the cheap. I think we should start with some background of the Reverb G2. This is actually the third version of HP's latest Windows Mixed Reality headset, and it's also pretty much the last WMR headset. But rest assured, it's easily the best that's ever been made within that category. Originally released about a year ago, the G2 was poised as being a possible Valve Index Killer, the best option for PC VR, boasting a super clear display, great audio, great comfort, and it never really ended up being that index killer. As good as it was, it suffered from a few big problems. Tracking quality was okay and bad at times, field of view was okay, and it required Windows Mixed Reality Portal, which just adds more weight. Oh, and the controllers lack something that most VR controllers do have, capacitive sensors, and that's a huge negative. Well, after the more enterprise-focused Omnicept edition with eye tracking and face tracking, here is HP's official second try at the G2. Pretty much if you buy a G2 right now, it'll still just say G2, but you'll get this upgraded version instead. And in the list of improvements, it includes a pretty massive hardware-based tracking update that supposedly increases the tracking volume by up to 30%, as well as the accuracy of the tracking. Also updated is a new face gasket system that improves field of view, clarity, and and increases comfort for glasses wearers, and the ability to launch SteamVR without ever touching Windows Mixed Reality Portal, and a new longer cable with better support for AMD video cards. So, does it live up to all of this? Who is this for, and is this a viable index killer? Uh, not so fast killer. We'll touch on all of that, but let's get into the actual specs and my experience with it first. This time around, I'm gonna start with my favorite parts of the G2 V2 before I talk about the bad. The viewing experience is actually pretty amazing. My two main headsets are a Valve Index and the Quest 2, with most of my time being spent on an Index. The G2 has a resolution of 2160 by 2160 per eye, but due to the lenses and displays, the perceived resolution is a lot better than what paper specs can really show. In terms of how this headset looks as a user, it's closer to the $2,000 Vario Aero than either the Index or Quest 2. The super high resolution and the panels that HP used are really impressive the text is extremely clear, the colors are noticeably more vivid than something like the index, and the contrast ratio is still in LCD territory, so black will look like a very dark gray, but because everything is so clear and the colors are vivid, and there's just about zero screen door effect, it does end up looking pretty good and it's not that distracting. I don't mind this contrast ratio especially compared to other LCD panels. Plus it has manual IPD adjustment through a slider, allowing it to be more comfortable for more people's eyes. And and the G2 only has a refresh rate of 90 hertz, but that's kind of not an issue at this resolution because, not gonna lie, even with a 3090, it's kind of hard to stay at 90 FPS at full render res. But moving on, another thing I love about this headset is the comfort and weight. It is significantly lighter than the Index's 809 grams at around 500 grams, similar to a stock Quest 2. Except, this is probably one of the most comfortable head straps on the market, akin to the original 
Oculus Rift, it's got one strap on top, two adjustment straps on either side of the headset, and I was able to make it tight. Wear it for a three hour game of Demio, it doesn't wobble or shake, it's just a good design and it matches the headset's weight. Since we just talked about the visuals, I will mention that the field of view is one place that I'll talk in the negatives if you're waiting for that, but a couple more positives first. The next huge thing for me is the audio and microphone. Designed by Valve, the same off-ear speakers as the Index, these are best in class for watching content in VR, experiencing spatial audio, which is what they are designed for. I am no true audiophile, but these give me a really great open back Sennheiser 600 feel without ever feeling something like headphones on my ears. Plus, the microphone is pretty superb, and I deem this a requirement for a VR headset. I spend most of my time in social VR, you know, talking to people and stuff, and it shouldn't be hard to put a good mic in a VR headset. <laughs> Testing the microphone quality on the HTC Vive Pro 2. But this is a massive feature that needs to be nailed, and the G2 nails it. Here's a quick microphone comparison. Testing the microphone on the Oculus Quest 2. Testing the microphone on the Valve Index. Testing the microphone on the Reverb G2 V2. But now, on to the negatives, which unfortunately may be kind of a deal breaker for some people. Tracking quality, controllers, field of view, and software slash performance. I'll start with the best of the worst, the field of view. The Reverb G2 is not a high field of view headset by any means. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. Compared to the competition, the original G2's field of view was noticeably smaller. The G2 V2 however, has a removable glasses spacer that brings your eyes closer to the lenses by 6mm from 15mm to 9 And that brings the old field of view up by as much as 15%, all depending on your face, of course. And it's a much needed improvement, it's immediately noticeable when using the headset, but the field of view in general still just really isn't that great. My perceived field of view is about on par with the Quest 2, but the index is still quite a bit wider and I find myself missing that. The clarity does make up for it, but of course, I wish I could just have both. Index or better field of view with this sort of resolution would be a perfect VR viewing experience. Next up on my gripes are controllers and tracking quality. So the G2 V2 was updated with better camera angles to provide a supposedly 30% increase in tracking volume, allowing you to have your controllers above your head and to your sides without ever losing tracking. And actually, the tracking in general is a lot better now, including no longer needing to have really textured play spaces with specific lighting like the original did, but I still experience tracking dead zones quite often. Here's one I noticed while just playing Demio, and you will lose tracking if you bring the controllers too close to the headset as well, as the cameras can no longer see the controllers. There are still some issues with having my hands down at my sides, which is just not ideal, and you will lose tracking above your head just like before, but you have a slightly wider tracking volume. In terms of tracking accuracy though, I didn't lose tracking ever actually, so for playing games like Beat Saber or Pop 1, it's certainly usable. And I don't think you'll have many issues as long as you get used to the quirks of the G2, but even with 30% increases in tracking volume, the Quest 2 and obviously the Index with its base stations just have better overall tracking hands down. Things have gotten better, and this is the best tracking on any WMR headset to date, and it's certainly usable, there's nothing terrible about it, but it's just not quite as good as the competition in either volume or dead zones. But you know what? It's not good. The absolute worst part of the G2 or G2 V2 or Omnicept are the controllers. HP had a chance with this refresh to fix the biggest problem with the G2, and they didn't, unfortunately. There are no capacitive sensors on these controllers still, which is a little shocking to me. Every other controller on the market has them, which means a lot of games rely on them for button input. With these controllers, you can kiss thumbs up, VR chat hand pose gestures, trigger proximity sensors, all goodbye, and this also means that a lot of games just don't work out of the box with these controllers and you'll have to readjust the mapping. Good example being Boneworks. It's just another thing that you have to do and for me, while these controllers are usable and there are workarounds and the tracking isn't bad, for some things like VRChat, not having capacitive sensors takes away from a massive feature like facial expressions, or really just expressions within VR in general in other games. Your fingers don't move unless you're pressing a button and it's one thing that the G2 and G2 V2 just 
aren't up to industry standard with flat out. So the G2 V2, it's a headset of weird compromises, but a pretty decent price. To me, it feels like a stripped down super budget Vario Aero. Take away the eye tracking, higher resolution, pimped up head straps, Steam VR tracking, and a spirit lenses. Oh, and you know, like $1,800. And you have a G2 V2. It's comfortable, has a very high resolution, great looking display, good enough tracking, great audio and microphone. It just falls a little short in field of view potential, lacks in some tracking scenarios, and the controllers are kind of flimsy and don't reach industry standard because they're lacking a crucial set of sensors. And there is actually something you can do about that. Using a place-based combiner, you can combine the tracking from the G2 in base stations to use valve index controllers or have full body tracking, but it's not nearly as perfect or seamless as just using a base station tracked headset like the index in the first place. And considering two base stations plus two knuckles and a reverb G2 comes out to around $1,200, I don't know if it's really worth the FOV trade-off or hassle, even if the visuals are great. But if you don't care about ever using full body tracking or index controllers, and you just want to play some good looking PC VR games with more than adequate tracking, then this is a really compelling option. For gaming or simming, it's cheaper than the index and has a lot of the same features and looks better in every way besides FOV. And if you're wondering between the Quest 2 and this, if you want a headset that's a little more data and privacy friendly and isn't controlled by Meta, this is a great option as well if you just want to stick to PC VR only experiences. Plus, it's really hard to compare PC VR quality at this level between the Quest 2 and G2 because this is using a DisplayPort cable. It's direct. There's no artifacting, no compression. What's rendered is what you see, and that's not the case with the Quest 2 with AirLink or Virtual Desktop or even wired Oculus Link, which is why headsets like this even still exist. It's got a cable, but you just can't get seamless quality at this resolution over the air right now. If you want a really high quality visual experience, then this is a great PC VR headset for general VR usage, and it could also serve as a monitor replacement. It's that clear. But no, this headset is not an index killer still. It's a great intermediary between the index and Quest 2 for PC VR usage, and if you're a VR gamer or a simmer or a viewer, I don't think you'll go wrong with this headset or regret it as long as you know what you're signing up for. You're gonna have to remap controls, you're gonna need a pretty darn good PC, and you'll just have to learn where the tracking dead zones are and avoid them. But other than that, I'd say the G2V2 is a very solid headset, especially for the price, and will likely wow a lot of people that put it on for the first time. It's still the absolute best visual clarity for the price, and if that's your priority, then it looks like you've got a pretty clear winner as to what your PC VR headset should look like. Eh, I'm gonna say though, I'm sticking with my index and that's just because the tracking and FOV and the ease of use with Steam VR. I still like this headset a lot and I think it's good for a lot of people, but not for my specific uses. And I do a lot of VR chat, so <laughs> yeah. I will be streaming with this headset today on Twitch, so stop on by and say what's up and ask any questions that you'd like and you'll be able to hear the mic live and everything. And join in my Discord for updates on when that's happening. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.